A warning not to swim and bathe in lakes is a common sight across parts of America. These green, paint-like waters contain millions of tiny algae, which can often be toxic. So how are small microscopic algae capable of killing large animals, or in the worst case scenario, you? Algae are simple plants that range from microscopic species like plankton to macroscopic individuals like giant kelp. The majority of these use photosynthesis to generate energy, relying on converting sunlight, CO2 and nutrients into energy in a growth. Microscopic photosynthetic algae known as phycoplankton are a key component of algae species. They often have astonishing growth rates as a result of their small size and relatively simple structure, which allows a rapid population explosion if conditions are favourable. When the watery environment warms up and have enough nutrients to support such growth, the algae reproduces to such large numbers their presence alone can change the water colour. These blooms can generate rapidly, seemingly out of nowhere and in most cases are harmless. However, depending on the species blooming, they can cause a range of symptoms in humans from excruciating pain to dementia and even death. Similar to most species of animals and plants, phytoplankton don't like being eaten by predators. This pressure to defend oneself often manifests in the development of defensive mechanisms, of which vary greatly between species. This may include the production of mucus to coat oneself as an attempt to protect from the environment and predators. Other species may develop more complex mechanisms such as barbs, spines and toxins. The direct effect of these defensive mechanisms would only ever be harmful to an organism of similar size, such as predatory zooplankton. However, detrimental effects can accumulate if the algae is inhaled or ingested in large numbers. These effects are especially common as you follow up the consumption of defensive phytoplankton up the food chain. Detrimental effects from algae blooms on humans start to become apparent when toxic species bloom on beaches, lakes or waterways where humans are likely to come into contact with them. Depending on the species blooming, the location and how you come into contact, the detrimental effects vary drastically. The most common ways to come in contact with the bloom is through direct exposure with contaminated water or the eating of marine animals living within the bloom. With this in mind, shellfish harvesters and beachgoers are the most susceptible. It's important to know that depending on the bloom, one can experience vastly different short and long-term effects, all varying in severity. Sigwa toxins are transmitted through the consumption of contaminated reef fish and can lead to Sigwatora fish poisoning. This would result in abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, burning sensation, abnormal temperature, pain, weakness, slowed heartbeat and hypertension. Sigwatora fish poisoning can lead to long-term chronic depression as well, which in some case could last for years. Sigwatoxins aren't the only toxins algae produce. A handful of algae species have been shown to produce domoic acid, which can then bioaccumulate within shellfish. If you eat too many contaminated shellfish, this may lead to amnesic shellfish poisoning. If you do have the unfortunate luck of experiencing this, Vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, confusion, disorientation and memory loss will be the first symptoms. This can lead to dementia, seizures, coma and potential death. Whilst you or I are unlikely to ever experience any of these illnesses, it should be noted that harmful algeal blooms are currently on the rise. It's currently unknown what has caused this increase. However, a few of the leading theories involve global warming and nutrient enrichment of coastal waters. Whilst we can't pin down the exact cause of the increase, we can be certain that more regular blooms along with continuous human development around the coastal locations will result in increased human contact with the blooms. With further research and development, we may gain a better understanding of the complex interactions that lead to these strange and potentially dangerous ecological events, hopefully reducing both the human and economic issues caused by these blooms. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like to see more of what we do, please remember to like, share and subscribe.